Hey grade 12s, welcome to Black Power Movement. It is important to note that South African events do not occur in a vacuum, as we are part of a large continent and a much larger world. Therefore, whatever happens in the North has a huge impact of what happens here. For this section, it is important to understand the international background and what the world was like in the 1960s. This will help you contextualize the Black Conscious Movement in South Africa in the 1970s. Reasons for the movement. The Black Power Movement grew out of Black dissatisfaction with the achievements of the Civil Rights Movement, the CRM, in the second half of the 1960s. While the Civil Rights had helped achieve and gains of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Act, the econ economic situation of most African Americans had not improved significantly. The majority of black people lived in crowded ghettos under very poor conditions. Many were unemployed, they were being paid low wages, or better op job opportunities were lacking. The ghettos were places of poverty and crime, which usually accompanied poverty. The police provided little protection, and in fact they were often guilty of brutality at the expense of any inhabitants. Black people were still subjected to a lot of discrimination and sometimes open racial abuse and violence. As these conditions persisted, black people, especially in the cities, became disillusioned with the civil rights movement and its practice of nonviolent resistance, which many felt to be inaccurate, inadequate. They began to look for a more aggressive or assertive way of resisting. In 1996, James Meredith planned a solo 220 mile march. This is James in the bottom picture here. He was the first um, black student to register at the university and here you see US Marshals at the University of Mississippi accompanying him. His march was against fear and it was go to go from Memphis, Tennessee to Jackson, Mississippi. And he wanted to highlight continuing racism in the South and encourage voter registration after passage of the voter after passing of the Voters Right Act in 1965. He did not want major civil rights organizations involved. And the second day he was shot by a white gunman and suffered numerous wounds. He did live. Thereafter. Others took up his march. One of those people were part of a group called Students Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, pronounced as SNCC, and its new leader was Stokely Carmichael. Stokely Carmichael was arrested during this march and released. And when he was released from prison, he stated the following, coining the phrase black power. This is the 27th time I have been arrested and I ain't going to jail no more. The only way we're going to stop them white men from whipping us is to take over. We've been saying freedom for six years and we ain't got nothing. What we're going to start saying now is black power. Stokely Carmichael is represented here in the image at the top. He ended up leading the Black Power movement for a while, up until there was a split in the decisions of what the Black Power movement was for. So what was Black Power? Black Power was believed by those who supported it to be about Black self-pride and self-esteem. Black is beautiful became a very popular slogan during this period. Black power also believed in this promotion of black interests and black self-help. It believed in black self-defense against racial oppression. It did not believe that a violent response towards a violent action was seen as a violent propaganda technique. 
they understood that it was self-defense. The fostering of distinctive black culture and they wanted to have a self-sufficient black economy. However, black power was not a formal organization and so different adherents or followers had a different emphasis. Some like Malcolm X, who we will talk about later, believed in black separation and self-determination rather than ultimate integration with whites. This was sometimes referred to as black nationalism and his ideas became more moderate towards the end of his life. In the summer of 1969 in the Olympics in, America, in Mexico, Tommy Smith and John Carlos give the black power salute. That image can be found in your textbook on page 199. This was during their 200 meter award ceremony. They came first and third respectively. They also refused to look at the American flag during this period. Smith and Carlos were unfortunately expelled from the games for their protest actions. So the Black Panther Party was created. We're going to use the acronym BPP. And they were created for self. They, they used to be called Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. It was founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale in Oakland, California in 1966. And its initial aim was for the protection of blacks from police brutality. It took advantage of an old California law that allowed them to carry loaded firearms in public as long as they were displayed and were not pointing at anybody. And in this image, you could clearly see both Black Panther Party representatives had a certain attire, they had a leather jacket normally, and they had a black um, hat that they would wear. But the most prominent thing that stuck, stood out was the fact that they carried weapons and arms, um, and they were loaded. So, the Black Panther Party were revolutionary socialists. Some of the demands in their 10-point program were entirely reasonable. And we're going to look at the 10-point program on the next page. Initially, Black Panthers were prepared to accept support of whites. This changed when Stokely Carmichael came into power as an honorary prime minister and under his leadership, the black nationalist idea was forced. His sharp anti-white rhetorics and after Carmichael's removal in 1967, the Black Panther Party moved towards regarding itself as a revolutionary internationalist movement. The BPP indulged in a range of criminal activities like drug dealing, prostitution, extortion, forcing money out of people. That's what extortion is. They were also involved in violent confrontations with the police and in which one scenario, 50 people died, both policemen and Panthers, and many more were injured. The co-founder of BPP, Huey Newton, was convicted of murdering a policeman in 1967 and served three years before his conviction was set aside on appeal. In later years, Newton in fact boasted of killing the policeman. Ironically, the Black Panther Party also operated what they called survival programs and in which they provided services to poor black communities such as free medical clinics, lessons on self-defense and first aid, drug and alcohol rehabilitation, classes on politics and economics, and most famously, the Free Breakfast for Children's program. This split in the Black Panther Party between the reformists and the revolutionary wings developed. Eventually, internal disputes and rising legal costs caused the Black Panther Party to fall apart and in 1980, there were only 27 members left. And at its height, however, the Black Panther Party attracted unwanted attention from the FBI. Its leader at the time was J. Edgar Hoover, who once called them the greatest threat to internal security of the country. The 10 points... Of the Black Panther Party was what we want now, 
We want freedom. We want power to determine the destiny of our black community. Point two. We want full employment for our people. Point three. We want an end to the robbery of the white men of black communities. Later changed to, we want an end to the robbery of capitalists of our black and oppressed communities. We want decent housing, fit for shelter of human beings. We want education for our people that exposes the true nature of this decadent American society. We want education that teaches us our true history and our role in the present day society. We want all black men to be exempt from military service. We want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. We want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county and city prisons and jails. We want all black people when brought to trial to be tried in a court by a jury of their peer group or people from their black communities as defined by the Constitution of the United States. We want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice and peace. Now, many of these points are entirely reasonable, but others are highly debatable. To some White Americans, they were even seen as being outrageous. For example, point three calls for reparation for slavery. So point three is we want an end to robbery of our white robbery by the white men of our black communities. They want to be compensated for the fact that they were taken without freedom of choice, relocated, put into slavery camps, worked as a slave for decades or hundreds of years. And they wanted payback for that. And as somebody that comes from an ancestry of slavery, it's a very difficult thing to break the cycle, to get out of that and to be able to build your life. And you keep being oppressed and you keep having to fight against things that are not being made available to you just because of the color of your skin. Point six called for black men to be exempt from military service. It declared, we believe that black people should not be forced to fight in the military service to defend a racist government that does not protect us. It went on to, we will protect ourselves from the force and violence of racist police and the racist military by whatever means necessary. The Black Panthers called this policing the police, whom they referred to, even publicly, as pigs. Now the black people, even today, are being attacked just because they're black. And it is a frustration, however... We need to understand that racism needs to be eliminated. People are people no matter what the color is. And these black individuals have been oppressed for so long, fighting against a system that was against them for so long, that they felt that the only way that they could protect themselves is to become violent back and to not fight for a country, be the backs that break so that the country can keep its freedoms where the blacks in that country are not benefiting from those freedoms. Point seven, called on black people to form armed groups for self-defense against police brutality and oppression. And point eight, called for the release of all imprisoned blacks because they had not received a fair and impartial trial. So, We read at point eight, we want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county and city prisons and jails. And that's because they believe they weren't judged by their peers. They were judged by a group that found them guilty. And we've seen many instances where there have been people sentenced to jail because they were black and not because of the crimes they committed. Because they were judged by a peer group that was not of their same social class, of their same ethnicity, 
And prejudice comes in to a situation where you are being judged by your peers. So, the Black Panther Party didn't last long. And we're going to look at a couple quotes and a couple sources now. If you can follow in your books, it's on page 201 and on page 202. We have the large majority of black people are either illiterate or semi-illiterate. I'm reading from source A. This is a quote by the Black Panther leader, Huey P. Newton in 1968. It says they don't read. They need activities to follow. The same thing happened in Cuba, where it was necessary for 12 men on the men with a leadership of Chi and Fidel to take the hills and then attack the corrupt administration. They could have leafleted the community and they could have written books, but the people would not respond. They had to act and the people could see and hear about it and therefore become educated on how to respond to oppression. The Panthers believed that a revolutionary mass could be formed from the human deteriorates which is a broken down material of the ghettos, from the brothers of the block, brothers who had been robbing banks, pimping, peddling, dope, brothers who had been fighting pigs, which are police, because once you organize these brothers, you get revolutionaries who are too much. Violence was present, pre presented as an effective way to empower the oppressed through fighting came liberation. So here we can clearly see that the Black Panther leader, Huey P. Newton, believes that fighting will get you what you want. Fighting for your rights, fighting, taking, and being a little bit more violent, I suppose. And that comes with fighting. So, an extract from 1968's book on Black Power Movement. Everybody wanted to know what this black power meant. If the SNCC had said Negro power or colored power, white folks would have continued sleeping easy every night. But black power, black, that word black. And the visions came of an alligator infested swamps, arced by primordial trees and moss dripping from the limbs. And out of the depths of the swamp, the myrrh oozing from his skin came the black monster. And fathers told their daughters to be in by 9 instead of 9.30. Black power. My God, the niggers were going to start paying white folk back. The nation was hysterical. Now, a similar thing happened in South Africa when Nelson Mandela came into power. A lot of the people believed that as soon as the ANC came into power, we would have an all-out all civil war. And ended up happening is we had a beautiful uh, World Cup rugby that tried to unite us together and Nelson Mandela um, fighting for unity instead of reparations. Um, and I think what this text is trying to get you to understand is that even though they're using the words black power they want to fight for their rights. They want to have their freedoms. They want to be independent. And when they say the word black, everybody gets frightened and you end up having these visions of these monsters coming towards you. Where all it is is an individual that wants to have the freedoms that every other white individual is enjoying in America at that time. So C. That is the image that we saw on this previous page. Let's go back here. This image over here. That is Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton. They're heavily armed in front of the Black Panther's self-defense office. Source D, statistics on support for the Black Panthers. Black militancy seemed stubbornly resistant to destruction. A secret FBI report to President Nixon in 1970 said a recent poll indicates that approximately 25% of the black population has a great respect for the Black Panther Party, including 43% of blacks under the age of 21. Now you've got a whole generation of people growing up under this oppression regime and seeing a whole 
a whole group of individuals fighting for their rights, fighting for what they believe, fighting for the freedoms that everybody else so freely gets in America. You cannot, you cannot blame the children under the age of 21 who are young and want to have freedom and want to take it by fighting. You know, they don't mind that because they've seen that it works. They've seen that it works when Fidel Castro took over Cuba. They see world wars happening and those that win the world wars are the strongest people. They see that that, that came from violence. Strength and power came from violence. America's strength and power came from its violence, retaliation, um, to the Japanese in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This is a world that they've been brought up into to show them that violence actually wins. And the civil rights movement didn't allow for their participants, or chose rather, that they would choose a non-violent protest. And the Black Panther Party just wanted to fight more. They wanted to grow quicker. They wanted to, to have their freedom within their lifetime instead of waiting decades for it to occur. So we will carry on in the next session uh, on Unit 3, looking at the roles of Stokely Carmichael and Malcolm X, the two different leaders that led the Black Power movement. But I want you to complete Activity 2, and I want you to submit that on the Google Classroom for me so that I can assess it and uh, we can actually do those questions together. Okay and mark it together and see where you've gone wrong. I hope you learned something in this session. Uh, it is the first video that we are doing. I apologize if it was a little hiccupy. We will get better at it.